you might be thinking to yourself, wow, Caitlin, that hair, that makeup, I feel like you just had a video like that, but you had a different lip color and a different shirt on. And to that I'd say, I did. I will admit, I took my sweatshirt off that was over this black turtleneck because two reasons. One, it's hot under these lights, and two, I want it to look like it's a different day, even though this eyeshadow, pretty recognizable. I also want to change my lip because I also wanted you to think that maybe this was a different day. Then I got on this camera and I told you that it wasn't a different day and it was the exact same day, but like these are the things I do to make it feel different. And so I exposed myself. Cheers. Um, hi. <laughs> After all that, hello. Yes, I did use a waiver on my hair today for the first time. And yes, I still have a lot of work to do to master it, but I feel like it's pretty cute. And I feel like it's faster than curling my hair. For a special occasion though, definitely gonna be using the curler, not this. But that's not the point, okay? <sighs> what are we doing today? Today we are doing the eyeshadow palette tag from the one and only Allie Glines. Technically, this is part two, and I never did the first eyeshadow palette tag they did, but this is the one they just posted, so I wanted to do this one. Maybe at a different time, if you do enjoy this eyeshadow palette tag, I can do the other part that they did, I think, a year ago. So let me know. Comment down below if you want another one of these. Like this video if you want another one of these. And while you're down there, just hit the subscribe button. It's like, it's right there. It, it's right there. You can also hit the bell. It'll give you a notification whenever I post a video. But yeah, if you want to see my eyeshadow picks based off of the lovely Allie Glines video, that you may or may not have seen, then keep on watching. I'm gonna try to make this a quick one because it's 11 p.m. and I'm just now on my third video of the day, okay? One YouTube, well, this is the second YouTube and a TikTok. So if you wanna see how I got this eye look or you wanna see how I got this face base thing, um, go to my YouTube for the base and go to my TikTok for the eyes. It'll all be in the description box. Anyways, eyeshadow palette tag. So about a year ago, Allie Glines, who is a lovely YouTuber that I follow, and Samantha March, who is also a lovely YouTuber, did an eyeshadow palette tag together. And they created these prompts and you had to go through your collection and find eyeshadow palettes that fit those prompts and how you felt about them. And then this year they decided to do it again. So they collaborated on a part two. And that's why we are here today for my part one, but their part two of the eyeshadow palette tag. So. Their first question was, what is your all time favorite palette? That one was a hard one for me because I feel like I don't have like an all time favorite. <clears throat> so I decided to think of it like this, okay? If someone looked at me and said, you have 20 minutes to do your eyeshadow for this super special, very important event right now, what palette are you gonna grab? And honestly, my first thought was the Mellow Cosmetics Sinopia palette because I have done some super gorgeous, beautiful looks with this, given the warm tone neutrals that are in here, the mattes, and some beautiful shimmers that really like light up your eyes. And so I think this would be my choice. I think if I had to go into my collection right now and pick my tried and true eyeshadow palette for an event, and get a foolproof, beautiful look, it would be this one. So there is this really cool blue moon shade in here that I still have yet to try, but it is real interesting. It's a lovely shimmer, but that's like the only pop of color. Other than that, it is lots of beautiful mattes. You have a beautiful bone, a deep shade, perfect transition, another perfect transition blush. Love it. I love pinky tone neutrals. And then you also have like a bunch of other mattes. And to be honest, mattes are my go-to. So like, the fact that the shimmers in here are like less quantity than the mattes is really my favorite. And the champagne and this birch shimmer are to die for. So I'd say this is my all time favorite palette and I, I wouldn't 
think that that would be my choice. I mean, this was my 2020 uh, eyeshadow favorite, eyeshadow palette favorite. I'd say this is a really good honorable mention though. So this is the Huda Beauty Naughty Nude. I can't say that this is my all time favorite because I definitely would grab the Sanobia first. But if for any reason, I needed a more like pinky mauve look for my super special event and I had to pick a palette that had that more like pinky neutral tone, it would be this one. The shimmers in here <clears throat> aren't necessarily my cup of tea, but I also have a lot of single shimmers that I do really like using. So I do think that when it comes to mattes, I would probably gravitate towards this palette. It's not above this one, but it's close. So I wanted to make it an honorable mention. So like, is it kind of cheating? Maybe. But that's not the point, okay? So then the prompt was, what is your new favorite eyeshadow palette? And it took me a second to figure that out because I feel like I have a, a decent amount of new palettes in my collection as of like November. So from November to about Christmas time, I feel like I, I collected quite a few palettes. And so I was trying to think like, huh, out of all the palettes, which one made me the most excited? And that would be the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. This palette, I believe, is also still on sale at Sephora for like $32, which is half off. So if you want to buy this, because it looks really cool to you, I'd highly recommend going and doing it right now because you're not going to get a chance to get this palette cheaper. Now, mind you, I've barely dipped into this, but when I did, I thought the look was beautiful, mainly because these two colors right here, these two mattes are stunning. But as far as like fun pastel and like fun colors go, there's a matte blue, there's a matte orange, there's matte pinks, there's matte, oh, this orange is more like peachy, but. And then the shimmers and the glittery toppers, and then there's also like metallics, and then there's, I don't know, it just, I feel like there's a lovely amount of mattes, there's a lovely amount of just like glittery metallic shades or shimmery metallics versus like glittery metallics versus glitter toppers, I believe this one is. I just feel like there's a lot of options here and it's super fun. Like you get a purple shimmer, a blue, you get a like teal blue matte, you get a peachy, you get a like your basic everyday shade. I don't know. I feel like this is a great palette and I couldn't decide between this one and the rose quartz. But honestly, I think when it comes to my personal preference and eyeshadow, having fun colors is really important to me. So I think this is gonna have to take a cake on that one. A palette that I keep solely for the memories at this point, okay? <clears throat> I have a few, I really do. One that came to mind was the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette because I couldn't tell you the last time I used that, but it was just like such a lovely, fun palette for me. It's like one of my first colorful palettes, it was great, but I didn't grab that one because there's another one. My Tartlet in Bloom, okay? If you can't tell, I have beaten this palette up and I do really enjoy this palette still. And it still smells delightful like all Tarte palettes do. But I couldn't tell you the last time I used this, okay? And it used to be my all time favorite palette ever but I don't touch it anymore. So I wanted to bring it up as a palette that I keep because of the memories, because this palette sits in my drawer in my bedroom, okay? So like the mini masquerade and other palettes that I really don't touch like ever sit in my makeup cabinet right over here. This one though, even though I don't ever touch it, it's still considered like a favorite, even though I don't use it. And so it stays in my drawer in my bedroom. So I figured, I keep this one like front and center in like the important drawer, even though it's not used because of the memories attached to it. Like it, it's, if I got a brand new one, I probably would like it again and use it all over again. But I mean, I only hit paint on this shade and then I'm real close on these two and this one and this one actually, but I haven't touched it. So keep it for the memories, Tartlet and Bloom. Uh, underrated palette. I just had to go with like a brand or a particular collection, if you will. I don't know. Um, Pro Fusion 10 shade palettes, okay? They have so many. This is the Spectrum, this is the Mobs, and this is the Neon. I use these a lot and I have a lot of videos using these. I think a lot of Makeup Mondays. Um, I, I also have 
a pretty popular Instagram reel using the reds in here to do like a Selena Gomez inspired look. And then this palette, the mauves, I've definitely used in like a inexpensive eyeshadow palette tutorial thing. These palettes are $10 for 10 shades. And the quality is amazing. They're so good. The metallics in this mauves palette are unreal. Let me just swatch one for you, okay? Like they are unreal. Okay, they are just stunning. They are beautiful. They are creamy. They are perfect. Like the mattes are creamy and perfect and beautiful and delightful. Like, do you see the colors in here? This is 20 bucks total, okay? If you were to go and get a rainbow eyeshadow palette from Sephora, or even like a more luxurious brand at Ulta, you're risking not getting good quality and paying 30 to $50 for it. This is 10 bucks, okay? And it's fucking great. Like, I just, it's the perfect amount of pigment on bright shades where you're still able to blend it. It's not gonna sit and stick to your eyes. It's moderately buildable, but honestly, very pigmented. And it's a dollar a shadow. One dollar, one dollar, one dollar. That's crazy. So as a whole, this one as well, I've done many looks with this, stunning. As a whole, Profusion eyeshadow palettes, <clears throat> immensely underrated. For the price, for the quality, for everything. These hold up way better than some of my high-end, super expensive eyeshadow palettes. Even Morphe palettes, these are better than Morphe palettes. And Morphe's like less expensive, paying $35 for like a 30 pan maybe. I don't know how many technically, but like, get these instead. Underrated to a ridiculous extreme, okay? I'm passionate about that one, so take my word for it. If you want an eyeshadow palette that's inexpensive, phenomenal, whether it's everyday, colorful, whatever. If you wanna dip into colors also, buy them. I don't know. Not a fave, but can't get rid of. Whoops, I forgot about that one. I'll just go grab them. Since we were talking about the Juvia's Place Masquerade Mini Palette, since it kind of is like a palette that I keep for memories, let's just call it not a fave, but I can't get rid of. This palette is real cool. It's the mini one. It's not the big giant one. There's two versions of this. Um, there's also a million and one discount codes, at least at the time that I got this, which I think was 2016. I don't know, 17 maybe. When it comes to the bright shades, there's one matte, this one. The rest of these are all crazy shimmers. And then there's these four mattes. So like, it's a little too deep for me and it doesn't give me a reason to dip into these crazy cool metallics because the only mattes are really the neutrals, but it's like a memory palette and I keep it. And I think I'll always keep it. But given my TikTok challenge, I will be using this palette at some point on TikTok because of my little like popsicle stick situation that I've mentioned a few times. So if you wanna see me use this, just go follow me on TikTok and you'll see it eventually. But I also have one more. And I think the reason behind not being able to get rid of this is important to mention, okay? I'm a sentimental girl and I'm kind of a hoarder, but I am relatively decent at purging my makeup. And if you haven't seen my makeup declutter video that I posted seven months ago, six, it was after I moved, but I filmed it before, so like six to seven months ago. I can get rid of stuff. But anything my child picks out for me, it's not going anywhere. This is the Too Faced Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette. My daughter picked this out with my mom two, three, three years ago. I've used it once and it smells like a dream. But like, it's a, it's a beautiful, pretty palette. I just don't reach for it. I'm just not sure why. I would like to use it more, but I just don't think about it. It's in my cabinet over here, so like, I don't see it, which is probably the problem. And I also think because Too Faced is kind of a questionable brand, like morally, I don't dip into it, but I've used it once, but I promise you, this palette will never go anywhere because 
my mom brought my daughter into a store and said, pick out an eyeshadow palette for mom. And she picked this one. So guess what? I will have this till the day I die. It's not a fave, but I'm not getting rid of it ever. Sorry, not sorry. Love you, Tina. My favorite collab. And I'm gonna say this is more the whole collection plus this eyeshadow palette. Raw Beauty Christie and ColourPop at Forest Sight Palette. This is my favorite collab of all time. These Super Shock single shadows, I have all four, all beautiful. <clears throat> the Cream Gel Liners, I have the three, all beautiful. I still use them at least once a week. This palette, stunning, beautiful, amazing. Like mm, the artwork, beautiful the concept, the design, like the duochrome. It's just, this collab is iconic and I will never get over it because it's that fucking good, okay? And there's other collabs that are great, I get it. But this one cannot be topped. Try and prove me wrong. You can't, it's fucking perfect, okay? This palette is perfect. Okay, now that I'm done aggressively yelling at you for my fave collab of all time, um, I'm going to talk about another collab, which is my 2021 favorite. <clears throat> Mind you, I did put the ColourPop Nude Mood as my favorite palette of 2021 as a neutral. But as far as like palette that I love, adored, and used a million times, I don't remember if I mentioned this in that video as my like colorful palette of the year, but the Nikki Tutorials X Beauty Bay palette. I'm sorry, have you, you seen this? It's fucking beautiful, okay? I bought this last year because of Gabrielle Alvarez, who I've mentioned a million and one times on my channel as well as on my Instagram because, well, simply she's inspirational, beautiful, and so fucking creative. And she did a look with this palette that I had screenshotted and I wanted to recreate so bad. And then the palette went on sale. Like aggressive, like 40% off, I think, sale. I think I got this for $18, okay? For the quality and the amount of shades, there are 20, 20 shades in here. These are some of the best eyeshadows I may have ever used. They blend perfectly. The shimmers are absolutely stunning. Like, let's just for a second, there's two duochromes in here that are just, I tried to wipe this stuff off, but that are just outrageous. Like just swatching it is just a joke. Like they hit different, you know? Like they're, they're built different. Let's just do one more for fun. This is another shade that I use a lot because I just love See that shine? This palette is built different, okay? Beauty Bay, I I probably would have never tried if it wasn't for Gabrielle Alvarez using this palette. Yes, when Nikki came out with it, I was like, wow, I'd love it, but like, I'm not going to order it because I don't need it. Gabrielle did a look with it, but I was like, I have to have it. And then it went on such a crazy sale that I bought it and I don't regret a single fucking second of it, okay? This palette is stunning. It has a million and one colors. You have a red, an orange, a pink, a yellow, a purpley mauve, burgundy, a teal, a dark blue, a light blue, a million beautiful shimmers. And then you have this super cool little diagonal here of neutral shades. So you can get a neutral look with this. And I have used this, I think twice or three times on Makeup Mondays. So on my Instagram, I have the look that I'm talking about, the Gabrielle Alvarez look that I wanted to recreate. That's over there. And then I also have an all neutral look with this palette, just to prove to you that although it's scary, it's a well-rounded bitch, okay? I feel very passionate about these. And I don't know if that's like a bad, like maybe I should chill out. But the problem is that eyeshadow palettes are like my makeup item. Like I love eyeshadow. Like some people are foundation whores, some people are concealer whores, some people are powder whores, some people are bronzer whores. Me, I'm a fucking eyeshadow whore. And if I could have like 500 plus eyeshadow palettes, I fucking would. Like someday if and when, because we're manifesting, I ever get PR, 
when someone sends me an eyeshadow palette, I'm going to cry of happiness because holy fuck. Like if I ever got on ColourPop's PR list, I think I would die because they release so many palettes and I would just be so fucking excited. I have to clear out a closet in my house just so I could store them all because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get rid of them. Anyways, I'm sorry, I digress. Something that I didn't expect to love that would have to be the Violet Voss I Love You Cherry Much palette. I really didn't expect to love this one as much as I do. I've used it a decent amount given like the tones. Like it's a very pinky red and super deep palette. So I did a video on this palette almost a year ago because I got this for my birthday last year. And when I did that video, I talked about how if you're a darker skinned girl guy human, he, she, they, we. This palette would be great for you because I feel like a lot of eyeshadow palettes aren't geared toward the deeper complexion. Complexions, English is hard. You get your like transition shades and your bone shades, which this does have like kind of a bone shade, but this is darker than my skin tone as the bone shade. And then you have like, these two are your transitions, but when you put them on, they're so pigmented that I typically would probably use another color in between to blend it out, but it's it's geared towards deeper tones, more pigment. Like, I feel like it's unique in that way because I must say, if I look at, I don't know, even the Sinopia palette. Sorry, there's a bunch of eyeshadow palettes here. If you look at this, these two shades are probably the only ones that are really gonna show up on deeper complexions. But then you compare it to a palette like this, okay? Look at all those. Like this whole area here would show up on deeper complexions. And the shimmers, they have like beautiful metallics that are like deep and just like, mm, ah, like jewel, jewel tone's not the right word, but they're just like rich. They're rich. Wow. Like I said, English is hard, but they're stunning. And when I did that video, I didn't expect people to really like that video that much, but I got like, I think almost 500 views on it, which is a lot for me. And someone did comment on it and say that they got this palette and I feel like people don't really talk about it. And to that I say, they're doing the, themselves a disservice because it's a beautiful quality palette. Violet Voss has great shadows. I had the Violet Voss X Laura Lee collab, like literally 2016, like I was pregnant and I had that, so 2016. And the shadow quality is great and I feel like no one talks about them anymore and it's maybe just because their color stories aren't like exciting or new, but this is lovely. And I think the fact that they're geared it towards deep tones and they like focused on the depth and the richness and the pigment, it just makes it different. And I didn't think that I would like it this much, but like this palette excites me, not because it's unique, but because it's inclusive. At least in my opinion, I'm also, I'm not deeper complected. Com complected? Sure, sounds right. Uh, I'm not that, so I could be wrong, but that's what my opinion was of it at the time and still is because I just, I don't know. I feel like it stuck out from all the other palettes for that reason. A palette that sparks joy wasn't hard for me to pick it off. That would be my Natasha Denona Triochrome palette. Little Jamie Page Doodle sticker on it because I also love Jamie Page Beauty on this channel. But this palette excites the fuck out of me. And every single time I see a video of someone using this palette, I get so excited. Natasha Denona like just recently posted a look using this palette. I'm definitely gonna recreate it. I don't know, it's just super exciting. You have like your green row, you have your purpley row, you have your like peachy orangey row, and then you have this center of triochromes. I just, I have to, I have to swatch them for you. Also, Natasha Denona quality is never going to be bad. It's always stunning, always beautiful. It blends great. The concepts are lovely. I just, I mean, she's a makeup artist. Like, what are you gonna expect? But. <sighs> So this is, when I look at it from this angle, this color is teal. 
this color is bright pink and this color is like a light oil slicky bright green but to you they're like pink and blue and gold this is a fucking green first of all okay the lights on this camera make it change green purple pink gold blue here but pink on my hand and purple in person and then this triochrome is like a pink gold peachy and i guess a bright green <laughs> it's not like these colors hold on i just i don't think you understand this these three shades is why this palette sparks joy in me a triochrome shadow just starts the shit out of me and then you have the wonderful colors to like coordinate with it you have whole rows which makes it super easy to use but also you can like mix and match and do a bunch of fun shit and i've definitely done fun looks where i use like this light green this light purple and then this like brighter peachy tone as like a pastel look and it was super beautiful so i don't know this is my sparks joy palette and if you can't tell why you're missing out it is limited edition from Natasha Denona, but it is still available. So if you're willing to spend a big chunk of change, it's well worth it, I must say. But it's fucking expensive, dude. Newest palette. The thing is, I received three eyeshadow palettes for Christmas, and those are definitely my newest palettes. I haven't purchased any since then, so I'm just going to show you all three. I definitely have talked about all this before, but Pixie by Petra uh, Rosette Ray eyeshadow palette, which my child purchased for me once again. So that will never leave my collection. I also have a TikTok and or reel, both maybe, talking about this palette and using it, if you want to see that. <clears throat> the ColourPop of Quartz palette, which is this beautiful thing. Cool toned beauty which I've also used. I don't know if I used it on Instagram or not, but I've definitely used it. And then the ColourPop Smoke and Roses palette, which I just used in a video recently, as well as a Makeup Monday. So this big old boy is beautiful. So those are the my newest palettes to my collection are these three because they were Christmas gifts from my family and my baby girl. And then my first palette used in 2022, I wrote down the Of Course palette, but then as soon as I picked this up, I feel like it was this. I know one of these two was it when I was in New Hampshire, still on vacation after Christmas and before I came back. One of these two. I don't remember, but it's one of them. So it's either this Rosette Ray by Pixie <clears throat> or of course by ColourPop. Looking back though, I think this was before 2022. So I think it was this. So it's the ColourPop of course palette. And it definitely is on a Makeup Monday on my channel. It's probably the first one I reported and posted after I got back from Christmas, which is why I must think it's this because that would have been on January 4th. And I definitely didn't put makeup on the second or the third and probably not on the first. So I think, I think it's this, but I could be wrong. But those are all my palettes, people. This is my eyeshadow palette tag. These are my answers. These are my palettes. I know I kind of cheated. I mentioned like two and sometimes even three per category. That's okay rules are meant to be broken and they never said you can only pick one. So like, what am I, what is one to do when you love eyeshadow this much? I apologize for how passionate I was. I feel like I was a little aggressive and for that, I'm sorry, but I'm also not. So like, it's a hard battle. So if you want to see some of these palettes in action, they will all at one point be used in this fun little challenge that I'm giving myself to force some creativity and also force the use of my palettes. I also included my three face palettes in here just to like turn up the challenge, you know, <clears throat> a blush palette, a contour palette, and a highlight palette. So if I were to pick those, I would have to do an eyeshadow look with those items, which could be difficult, could be easy. We'll see. Just to give myself like a little extra because I never use those either and they need love. But anyways, if you want to see any of these at that point, I would go follow my TikTok at Kayla Julian underscore makeup, which I've mentioned a million and one times. And then also my Instagram, which is the same thing where I do makeup Mondays. I also post my TikToks occasionally over there if they fit the like time limit. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> if you enjoyed this video, please like and comment down below. If you want me to do the first tag that they did, hopefully I won't double dip some of these palettes since their videos were like a year apart so you can definitely get different products but 
we'll see. Uh, but if you want to see that, please comment it down below and like this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. And I also have a podcast with my best friend called Singles and Thriving that is on Spotify, Apple, Google, and Amazon. You should listen to it because it's fun. We talk about random shit. We talk about funny stories. We talk about serious shit. We talk about mental health. We talk about relationships and dating, all sorts of stuff. Coming from two girls that have been single for like a hot minute, but that's fine. No one's judging. So yeah, those are all my things. This is all my stuff I got going on today. It's 1140 at night and I should go to sleep. You know, it's Saturday. And I'm up until midnight, not for fun reasons, but well, I consider this fun, but not for like partying reasons, but because I have nothing better to do. So I figured that filming three videos would be a perfectly good thing to do. Hope y'all have a wonderful week. I will see you next week at Friday. Nope. I will see you next week on Friday at 4 p.m. here. And that's all folks. Bye.